1922 from a small ex-army hut in a field just outside the Essex village of Rittle. A tiny team of pioneering wireless engineers working for the Marconi Company established Britain's first regular radio broadcasting station. Within a year, the station, using the call sign of 2MT, or as it soon became known to its many listeners, 2 Emma Tock, had become a broadcasting legend. As for its staff, those engineers, as its creator, used their unique sense of humor and innovation, not only to establish the ground rules for generations of broadcasters and engineers who followed them, but they laid the foundations for the later formation of the BBC. This, then, is the story of those engineers and the radio station they created, 2MT Rittle. Now, come along, gentlemen, please, please, you must settle down, gentlemen. I, I really must have this group photograph before the light fades. Come on, Noel, smile for the camera, we're all nearly famous, you know. <laughs> right oh, but I don't know about being famous. Oh, but we are. This one's for the family album, the pioneers of 2MT. Wait a minute, Elizabeth, don't stand at the back, you're far too important. Sit in the front. Yes, yes, Elizabeth, you must. Come on, Harry, you swap over. Yeah, that, that's right, just get behind me. OK, yeah, c- come on, Rolls, move over. Uh, please, please, I must insist, you really must stand still. Otherwise, you'll be out of focus. And we can't have that, can we? <laughs> <laughs> are, are, are you ready? Good. Now, one, two, three. <sighs> Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, and lady, of course. Well, that's all for today. Uh, but, but how many copies will you be requiring, Mr Eckersley? Well, who wants a copy? See, I'll need one for the new office wall. How about you, Noel? Oh, definitely. Assuming, of course, they can actually find our offices. Well... Let's give the whole 2MT team one. I think nine. No, make that ten. Uh, Mr Burroughs will want one as well, Peter. Yeah, well, as he's footing the bill, why not? He can put it in the Marconi Company archives. <laughs> <laughs> but make his a small one. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, apart from friend Burroughs and one for Edward here, could you send the rest all to myself? That's uh, Peter Eckersley, chief engineer... Care of the British Broadcasting Company, The Strand, London. Broadcasting Company, The Strand, London. Uh, yes, yes, sir, Mr Eckersley. Well, Edward, it's all yours now. Look after the old place. It's served us well. Now that we're all off to London. I just hope you're all making the right move. Yeah, it's a pity you're not coming with us. Sorry, old man, but there's still work enough in airborne wireless to keep us busy here. And frankly, old man, I just don't think there's any future in using wireless to entertain people. Well, it's a gamble, I know, but... Well, I feel I have a taste for this broadcasting thing, and anyway, it's got too large for our little hut. Well, Peter, the very best of luck to you. Thanks, Edward. Uh, and, and your new company project, is it, sir? No, no, uh, Mr Reith has summoned us to the bowels of this new British broadcasting company of his... No one above knows what we'll find. Well, well, sir, the very best of luck to you. <laughs> it should be fun, but if not... Well, you never know, I might just come back. <clears throat> uh, your attention, please, gentlemen and lady. A toast, if you will, a toast to British Broadcasting and the staff of 2MT, Rittle. British, British Broadcasting. broadcasting. Oh, oh, dear. Well, oh, well, you know, we had some good times here in this hut. The very best. Oh, good old 2 m Doc. Do you know, I do believe that we did something very special here. We did this thing called broadcasting. Now, you two... Don't get maudlin on us all. I was just saying to Noel, do you remember that night when we waited for Dame Nelly to sing live from the Chelmsford Works? Now, that was some night. Wasn't it just? Yes, now, when was that now? How could I forget? Just three short years ago. June 1920. And all of us sitting around in that hut, waiting the moment... I can hear them tuning up. Is it Chelmsford? Yes, it's Chelmsford, all right. Really blasting it out. What's the signal strength? It's high. Just look at that meter reading. Good Lord. Look at those valves glowing. And that's just the received signal. Amazing. I wonder how far their signal will reach tonight. I don't think we need an aerial. We could use that signal to light the building. Or the village. (laughs) (laughs) Have you heard? It's cost a thousand pounds just to get her to perform. We even had to lay on special food for her. And I bet the company didn't pay for it. Too right. I heard the Daily Mail coughed up. And all the top brass are at New Street Ah, oh, I knew that was the reason for all the spit and polish around the offices. I hear they even rigged out the packing shed with new carpets and curtains. And running around like a flock of headless chickens all afternoon. Well, according to the chap who brings the post, that's because they managed to blow up the transmitter this afternoon while testing. It serves them right for running obscene amounts of power. Mark my words, they're going to annoy someone today. You know, well, don't be such a pessimist. Let's just listen. Shh, she's going to sing.
That transmission from Marconi's experimental wireless station, MZX, was very much a demonstration of what could be achieved. Its listeners, the nation's amateur radio operators, and those few members of the public who were able to listen in. But despite an ever-growing public support for its infrequent concerts, the transmitter's days on air were numbered. For within four months, a worried government ordered the station off air. Where's Peter? Hey, Eck, have you heard? They've closed MZX down. What? Big bad Chelmsford? Yes, the postmaster general himself reckons their license doesn't allow for musical interludes or any other kind of broadcast entertainment. Doesn't surprise me. I heard that the Croydon air traffic system suffers badly. Seems that pilots can't hear the background controller throughout their musical interludes. Hey, Eck, did you hear? Dame Nelly's been interfering with your old transmitter down at Croydon Aerodrome. <laughs> you know, gentlemen, thinking about it, it's really a great shame about Chelmsford going off air. They heard it all over Europe, you know, and that's not forgetting all those reports from ships way out in the Atlantic. Mm, so they say. I really thought the concerts were going to lead to something big. Well, what, a national service? Well, I, I don't know about that. That's a very long way off. But, well, it would be nice sometimes just to switch on a wireless set and not get constant Morse code popping. Well, you can't knock the radio hams, Peter. I know, but I do believe it's driving me slowly insane. Well, I did tell you MZX was pumping out a very large signal. Their aerial current kept messing up my calculations. The poor old wave meter just couldn't cope. Ah, so that's the current excuse, is it? I told you doing calculations were a waste of time. Oh, yes? Yes. It always works best when designing using guesswork and genius in equal amounts. Everyone knows that. I often find the old inspiration and perspiration approach works best. Oh, here, here, down as science. The problem, old man, is that your damn radio just doesn't work. And nobody knows why. Look, you told me it had to be lightweight, reliable, sensitive, aeroplane-proof... And, yes, pilot-proof. So? And here I quote, most of all, it has to be cheap. Now, you didn't tell me it had to work as well. Quick, Peter, change the plans. The radio has got to work. <laughs> yeah. Ah, last. There you are. Gentlemen, a new recruit to our happy band. Can I introduce Basil McClarty? He's come to join us from the Air Transport and Travel Company down at Croydon, where he's been bolting our little toys into aeroplanes. Oh, how'd you do? Yes, well, uh, now he's come among us to make them better. <laughs> <laughs> now, Basil, let me introduce you to our long, low hut full of long, low people. <laughs> on your left is Noel Ashbridge. He's the serious one, but he designed some first-class systems. Hello, old man, and welcome to the hut. Uh, then behind that cloud of pipe smokes, Harry Kirk. He designs things and builds them damn well. Welcome to Rittle, old man. Uh, Edward Trump usually sits over there, but he's away on a rush job. Now, who else do we have? Ah, oh, Rolls Wing is hiding behind that mass of wires. Just to shake hands with him if you can find him. Good morning, Basil, from the working minority. <laughs> <laughs> some of us have to keep the ship moving, you know. <laughs> Uh, Freddie Bob and Harry Russell have dived over to New Street for bits and bobs, and, uh, oh yes, our secretary is Elizabeth Beeson. You'll meet her later. Her father runs the local pub in the village. Our second design office. Probably our only design office. <laughs> Very true. Well, that's about it, Battle, so all that remains is to offer you our formal welcome to the Airborne Wireless Research Division of the prestigious Marconi Wireless Telegraph Company. Well, as we know it, home sweet home in a hut. Welcome. Oh, nice to see you. Uh, thanks. Uh, now, I must dash. We'll have a chat later. I've got some urgent paperwork, you know. Uh, right. Well, old man, consider yourself lucky to be posted here, down at New Street. They really are a stiff bunch. They all stand up and practically salute on the company train to London, where a manager climbs abroad. Very different here, though. So, Basil, what have you been up to in the real world, then? Well, I've, I've done a bit of fault finding and lots of installations and repairs. So I hope to learn a lot. So, what do you actually do all day? It's quite straightforward, really, Basil. One fine morning, we have a good idea about how to talk to aeroplanes better by wireless. Which is better than the previous good idea we had. Oh, quite. Then we design and build one, make it work, and send the plans to New Street, where they build a set for us. Oh, I see. It gets better. Yes, after which they send it back to us and we make it work. At which point New Street then build tin sets, after which it's back to us again to get them all working. Meantime, we've all had another bright idea for the design, and we do it all again. It's really a bit of a vicious circle, but great fun. <laughs> <laughs> they tell me, Basil, you were installing AD3s down at Croydon. We'll meet the AD4, a bit of the AD5, and very probably the AD6, all designed and built in this fair hut. Hmm, interesting. So, what have you done to it? Time enough for that later, old man. Let's get a breath of fresh air. Once round the hut, I think. 
Like X says, life in this hut's a little basic. Oh, that's better. <sighs> Wind's still from the northeast. Oh, well, never mind. Oh, by the way, the motorbike and sidecar you arrived on. A bit on the temperamental side, isn't it? Sorry about that, but it's all the transport we have. Well, it just needs nursing a little. We use it for nipping over to New Street for odds and sods. But it lives under the ground sheet over there. Yeah, and if you want to pay a call of nature, the gentleman's room is that upturned, nice red horn speaker in the hedge. Otherwise, it's run up the lane to the cock and bells. You're right. It's a bit on the basic side. And possibly the most important member of our team, the hut's official goat. <laughs> He hasn't got a name, but he's the world's only truly earthed goat. We tie him to the earth spike. Earth spike? Uh, if we ever get a short circuit, it will be roast goat for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Over the next two years, as the Ritter team continued to develop their technical expertise in early airborne wireless telephony transmission systems, the nation's many experimental radio amateurs continued their campaign for the re-establishment of Marconi's Chelmsford-based high-powered wireless broadcasting station. This transmitter, using the call sign of MZX, had broadcast on a set frequency, which allowed radio hams and other broadcast engineers to calibrate their equipment, with the added side effect that the public could listen in as well. It was a battle that was to take the nation's radio amateurs more than two years to win. But their victory in early 1922 brought with it a new challenge for the inhabitants of Marconi's Airborne Wireless Research Division in their Riddle Hut. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late, chaps. I'm not bothered with the old bike again. What happened then? Well, you know, that sidecar's tire is dreadfully flat. I told you it wanted pumping up, Peter. Yes, well, I had to lean over and ride the damn thing on two wheels at the London Road. Next week, the circus. And then I hit this patch of ice and ended up in the ditch. Oh. Why is it only you, Peter, that has problems with that bike? Well, it's not just me, you know. Just wait till it's your turn, Edward. There'll be no sympathy from me when you come off. Ah, but you've got to know how to handle the beast. Other good is all right. Oh, dear. Uh, sorry about the package, lads. I think one of the valves has definitely had it, but the plans will soon dry out. Elizabeth, a nice hot mug of tea for the injured hero. Oh, good idea, Harry. And I suppose you all want one as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, well two sugars for me, please. Well, I've had some rather interesting news. And what's that then, Peter? A letter no less from the illustrious postmaster general himself, Noah. By his command, gentlemen, we can do it. Do what, Mr. Eckersley? We have his permission, Elizabeth, to do this thing called broadcasting. So, 1922 is going to be the year it all starts. Well, thanks be to the radio hams. But why us? Well, we are supposed to be a research division of Marconi, and you could say this will be a form of research. Indeed, yes, but this time, as you would expect from the gentleman, this time there is a whole stack of rules. Such as, Egg. Uh, now then, maximum power is only 250 watts. We're only allowed half an hour a week. Oh, yes, and we have to close down for three minutes every ten to listen for interference to what he calls legitimate services. Now, I hate to interrupt, old man, but presumably that makes us an illegitimate service, or to coin a phrase, a bunch don't, of... Don't, 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 don't say it, Elizabeth, next door. So, are we going to be allowed to broadcast? Well, from this letter, it certainly looks that way. Well, yeah, first question, then, has anybody ever broadcast before? Oh, oh, no, no, no. Well, I propose we all adjourn to the cock and bell to make some plans. All agreed? Good. Motion carried. Let's go. Tea up. Oh, now where have they gone? Cheers, gentlemen. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, cheers. Yeah. By the way, I forgot to mention back at the huts, but uh, there are two more slight pieces of bad news. Go on. I just knew it was too good to be true. Yes, well, the top brass have asked Arthur Burrows to oversee our broadcasting activities. What does he know about it? Well, he's in charge of the company's publicity department, isn't he? But why should he have to poke his nose into our affairs? Maybe they think he's going to be some sort of form of good publicity for the company. Well, he's arranging for some records and a gramophone for us. Oh, goody. What's the other item of bad news? <sighs> Officially, the company won't let us work on the beastly thing during normal office hours, so I'm afraid it'll mean giving up a bit of our own time. Unpaid, of course. Mm. Oh, come on, none of you have got homes to go to anyway. I think the question is, can we do it? It'll take up a lot of time, you know. Yes, and we do have other important projects, remember. The AD6 is still not up to specification yet. Oh, come on, Edward. Be positive. It should be simple, so let's build a transmitter, switch it on and talk to the people. And on which day shall we deign to transmit our thoughts to the world? How about 
Monday night. Well, we've got to get these records delivered from London. If friend Burroughs has done a deal for them, Monday could be a little tight. You know what the trains are like. Well, I can't make Monday evenings. That's the night we have our archaeological society meetings. I don't want to miss them. <laughs> Looks like it's going to have to be a Tuesday evening, then. Right. All agreed. Tuesdays it is, then. Agreed. agreed. Fine. Now, Basil, you can design it with Harry, then Edward and Rolls can build it and Noel can test it. We might need to design it from scratch. No, I don't think so, Basil. I suggest you steal the Croydon design, but tone it down a bit. Should do the job a treat. Well, at this size won't be a problem if we can upgrade the design. Yes, well, I have a few ideas about that. Now, has anybody any ideas how to broadcast? Let's switch it on and see what happens. Ha, <laughs> ha! <laughs> if we go on air on Tuesday evening, chaps... What time do we transmit our hallowed half-hour? Well, not too late. I've got to get home to Whittam. Well, they'll have to wait for all the hams to get home from work and set up their equipment. Say, about seven? No, mm. I think it's better to start an hour later, give people time to digest their suppers. Yeah, eight o'clock it is. And... Just one point, Peter. What's our call sign going to be? Oh, almost forgot. We've been allocated 2MT. That's two Marconi testing. Or as our wireless ham friends have it, two Emma Tock. There's a nice ring to it, don't you think? Yes, two Emma Tock Rittle. I like it. Now, what frequency <coughs> shall we use? I, I believe we have to give calibration signals all over the shop, but I think we should have our own. Well, the Croydon set was on 1,200. And so let's go for 1,000 metres for Morse. And how about 700 metres for speech? We'll check it when we switch it on. OK, gentlemen, now, how long will it take to build? Oh, a couple of days to sort out the guts of it. And I have most of the bits we'll need, and the main board can come out of the scrap pile. We can borrow the valves from that RDF set, but I don't think that one of the MT4 is very good, and the MR1 is glowing a funny colour. Well, when can you sort it out? With any luck, probably by tomorrow afternoon. I'll give it a thump in the morning and try it out. And if it dies on you now? Oh, I'll pull some spares from New Street. OK, then. Next question is, who's the best Morse operator? Uh, no, let me rephrase that. Who can send Morse? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Well, look, all right, let's draw lots, and if no-one volunteers, well, Ashbridge, it's your job. Thank you, Peter. Now, according to this memo, we have to call CQ three times. I've often wondered just what CQ means. Does it's, anyone know? Yeah, it, it's all radio ham talk, Edward. They invented this Q code to save time hammering their Morse keys. So instead of saying in Morse, hello, is anybody out there, they just hammer out CQ. Somebody told me it means seeking you. Well, you live and learn, don't you? Yes, as I was <laughs> saying, according to this memo from the gods, we have to call CQ to MT three times at one kilowatt on 180 metres, then again on 450, and finally on 1,000. Then do it all over again at 500 watts and again at 250. Mm. But remember, speech can only go out at 2.50. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, it sounds incredibly tedious, chaps. Well, at least we do get to talk to the listeners, and you never know where that might lead. Uh, right, chaps, drink up my round, I think. Oh, there you are, Peter. Two empty, heart, body and soul. Looks a fine job, Harry. Three days' hard work went into that. We've based it on the one and a half kilowatt Croydon air traffic control system, designed by your good self. Added a few bits, lost a few bits, and had a couple of flashes of inspiration. So one transmitter, as per your back of an envelope specification. God bless her and all who sail in her. Well, I hope the top brass like it. I wonder how far this will reach. Just how much power can we put out, Noel? Oh, probably 400 watts, providing it doesn't rain. Mind you, on horse, you'll get up to a kilowatt, but the valves won't last too long if you hammer them too hard. I'm a bit worried about the aerial. <laughs> bit of a lash-up, but it should work. Well, let's hope it does the job. Well, we'll soon find out if it's going to work tonight. That's all we can do for the moment. Uh, I have to dash over to New Street, but I suggest we get together in the Cock and Bell around 6.30 tonight. But I think you could say we are in business. Well, chaps, tonight's the night. Soon know if it's going to work. By the by, did you know this pub's haunted? Go on with you. It seems a jilted young lady once hung herself in one of the back bedrooms. Well, don't tell Elizabeth, will you? It might be in her room. Don't tell Elizabeth what, Mr Wynne? Oh, Kirk's been telling us about your ghost. No, I wouldn't believe that old story if I were you. Father's always telling it. I was wondering why you were behind the bar. Just helping out. Oh, I see. So, are you all ready for tonight? As ready as we'll ever be, Elizabeth. Now, gentlemen, come to order. We really must decide what we're going to do tonight. Well, the records are right this afternoon. OK, gentlemen, drink up. Time to go. Innkeeper, we thank you for your hospitality, but we have to go and make history. <laughs> <laughs> God, it's freezing in here. Oh, it's going to be a long night. 
Can someone get the stove on? Have we got any spare wood? How about that old gramophone packing crate? Well, you can't use that, old man. It says return to sender, but doesn't specify the condition. The top brass won't like it. They were not best pleased when we sent the gramophone back broken. Look, Ash, it's either your chair or that box on the stove. Oh, splash the wretched crate, then, but on your own heads be it. Sorry I'm late, chap. Spot a bother at home. I wondered where you'd got to. It was your shout down the pub, you know. Oh, well, there's always the next time. Yeah, all right. It's now ten to eight by my watch, so let's warm up to M.T. Who knows, it might even warm this room up. Can you make sure the aerial loads up properly? Just key a tone. Please, chaps, a little quiet in the room, please. What about the licence? Remember it said eight o'clock on the dot. Well, so we may owe the Postmaster General a few minutes, Ash. Our audience awaits. That's the generator. She's up and running. Then let the show begin. Here we go, then. Um, uh, CQ, CQ, uh, two Emma Tock. What the hell was that? I don't know, Eck, but the set's gone dead. Ah, Hang on a bit. Something's got very warm. Far too warm, Hang on, chaps. I can smell it. It's one of the condensers, Harry. Oh, found it. Have it changed in a minute or two. Quick, look in the bin, Edward. Get the spare. That black one will do. Got it. Here. Harry, catch. Come on, Rolls. Only three minutes to go. Cut it out. Can you do it, Harry? Just twist the end together. Yes. Y- yes, excellent. Uh, done it. Right. Let's switch on again. <sighs> Up and running, Eck. Try some speech. Oh, we're live again. Ready, chaps. It's eight o'clock. OK, then. Let's try the key again. Is it going out? Oh, I think so. The meter's moving. Well, the valves have a bit of a glow, so it all looks good. OK, let's try some speech. Kurt, you start it off. <clears throat> uh, hello? Uh, hello? Ah, uh, this is Rittle. Call sign 2MT. Uh, good evening from 2MT at Rittle. Uh, in Essex. Uh, um, this is the Marconi radio station uh, transmitting. Hello? 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 Is it going out? It is. Oh, tremendous. Uh, this is 2MT. 2 Emma Talk Riddle calling. Uh, um, uh, well, hello everyone. Well, what can I tell you tonight? Our very first night. Uh, happy Valentine's Day. Why are you listening to me on a night of romance and love? Uh, no, I don't mean it. Please stay and listen. Ah, I have some records for you. A bunch of records from London supplied with the compliments of the Chapel Piano Company. The selection consists of a flute solo, the Swan, a cello solo, the Angles, uh, no, sorry, Angels Serenade, a cornet solo, Il Baccio, another flute solo, Sample Aveux, and another cornet solo, Softly Wakes My Heart. I'll um, play them now. something. Harry's drying up. Harry, give me the microphone. Um, good evening. This is 2MT. You've just been listening to a gramophone record entitled Minuet, performed by the St. James Sextet. Now, I believe that some of you radio hams are to use our fine signals to calibrate the sets. So, just for them, Here's some quick test passages. Are you ready? Screwdrivers poised? Go! One, two, three, four, five. Mary had a little lamb. Sister Susie's sewing shirts for soldiers. A, B, C, D. How, how is that? Uh, I hope you were listening. Good, good, very good. Peter, we must close down. It's been over three minutes. Oh, um, and now we are closing down for three minutes. Well, chaps, at least we got through last night and we've had a few reception reports already. I just don't know, gentlemen. It wasn't really a very good signal, was it? I spoke to Captain Round this morning over at New Street and he thought the signal was muffled and distorted. Could be the valve anodes. They were blushing a little. 
Whatever you say about it, there was definitely no top at all. What, some sort of overmodulation? Could it be a loading problem? Well, it's simply got to get better. Well, talking about making it better, I say, chaps, whose round is it? Yours, Noel. I should have known. Same again? Yeah, oh, yes, 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 yes. Well, Peter, you did tend to shout at the thing, but it doesn't like any of us. Could you bring the microphone, then? No, the test sounded OK, and the circuit design worked fine at Croydon. Look, even Bill Ditcham couldn't find the problem. Rolls, what state is the area in? Looks fine to me. I checked it out this morning. And the army test set still loads up fine. Well, the condensers are all OK. No cracks, no shorts anywhere. I just can't understand it. Well, there's still something wrong. All our transmissions sound, well, just plain flat. The local amateurs are all complaining. You know, we could always blame it on atmospherics. Yeah. Well, at least we didn't have to give up our day jobs. Egg, I found it! I found it! We found what? The answer to our problem. We're out with it, man. It's our damn condenser. Well, what about it's it? It's a hundred times too big. I think it's got the wrong markings. Either that or you couldn't see them for the dirt. Where did it come from, Harry? I don't know. Rolls must have been salvaged from something. That's it, then. Remember, we just grabbed it out of the junk box. Oh, what bad luck! Well, if that's all it is, and if Harry can find another art to spec, should be a new one around the works somewhere. Maybe our credit's still good with the storekeeper. I'll see if I can liberate one tomorrow when I'm over there. Well, thank heavens for that. Look, Harry, do that. Fix it up and try it out. And if it's OK, come next Tuesday, two MTs really going to ripple the ether. Over the next few weeks, the signals of two MT brought in an ever-increasing number of reception reports and a growing listenership. But whilst the signal quality of the transmitter continued to improve, bringing reports from as far away as the south of France and the north of Scotland, because of constant redesign and reconstruction, equipment failure was an ever-present problem. It's lucky they left the piano from last week. I don't know about lucky. I can hardly move for it stuck up against my bench. They could never have moved it back in this weather. I say, Harry, will that new condenser work? After all I had to go through to get it, it had better. Oh, yes, and what crime did you have to commit? Let's just say we owe the storm a drink for looking the other way. We also managed to liberate quite a few spares and a nice new MT4 valve. Oh, excellent. But you'd never think we work for the same company, would you? Peter, it's absolutely pouring outside. We'd, we'd better batten down the hatches before... Before the rain comes in. Well, by the way, did you move the goat? I'd hate it to drown if the river floods tonight. No, it's fine, Noel. I tied it to the back earth spike when I got in this morning. At least we won't have to water the earth spike like last summer. I still say it didn't grow an inch. <laughs> I bet it will with all this rain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look out, chaps. Water at two o'clock. Fetch the buckets. Uh, will somebody sort that generator out? The voltage is all over the place. Sorry, Noel. Can't do a thing with it. What's the problem? There's water in the carburetor, Egg. Oh, dear. I've nailed a sheet to the catch the drips and thrown down some rags over the connectors, but it's still getting in. Let's hope that solves the problem. But do you think we can transmit tonight? It might keep going if we're lucky, otherwise it's going to be lights out time. Has anyone checked the aerial recently? Well, the feeder's still there. Don't know about the rest of it there. One of the masts was bending over a little earlier. I think they must all be rotting at the bottom. I'm not surprised. It's like a bog out there. Well... C can we get any more grease to bung up that hole? Which hole's that, then? Oh, look, the one where the aerial goes through the window. See, the water's coming in. I've got it. All we have to do is block it up with some of your brill cream, Peter. Well, gentlemen, I'm afraid we need a volunteer to go out and check that something's not amiss out there. So, step forward, brave volunteer. All right, Eck, I'm going, I'm going. But if I'm not back within the hour, call out the dogs. Sorry, old man. You'll need a lifeboat out there. Hey, Harry. Hope you can swim. He <laughs> <laughs> could drown, you know. No, not unless he falls in the sewage farm. Better keep downwind of him when he gets back, then. You, you, you think the transmitter will load, OK? Oh, yes, the beastly thing would load into a perfect short circuit. But I don't think we'll be going far tonight. And unless that generator is going to keep running, we won't be going out at all. OK, Basil, let's see if we can get your nice new gramophone working. Oh, no, no. No, that's terrible. It simply will not do. Sounds a bit on the flat side, doesn't it? Well, it's not just that, Basil. That squeak has to go. We need a spot of oil on the main spring. Are you sure they're the right type of gramophone needles? What difference will that make? Ah, the duplex ones give a nice, soft tone. But those other things just make it sound like a strangled cat. No, I, I think it's all down to the horn. Try putting a sock in it. Has, has anyone got any sticky tape? We could wrap it up tight. It won't look very good. Well, that's the last thing I care about, Edward, so long as it works. Uh, what about the tone? Well, try it with the bottom doors open a bit. Yes, you see, that's better. It sounds a little better. I, I think we may have found the ultimate volume control. What? 
Open and close in a little door? No, no, that only sharpens up the tone a bit, but... Well, as for the volume, you see, if we move the microphone away from it, uh, then we'll have the smoothest volume control in history. Well, that's one way of doing it. As I always say, pioneers always know better. I say, Harry, try not to shake all that water all over the equipment, old chap. Oh, Peter, I hate to worry you, but the water is getting very close to the hut. How bad is it? The vegetable garden's underwater already, and the rabbits are swimming for it. Man the pubs! Well, I propose to the house that we all abandon ship. Aha, so the rats are leaving the sinking ship. <laughs> I don't know about that, but I feel it definitely time for a hasty, but nonetheless immediate and coordinated retreat to the cock and bell. Tally-ho, chaps! <laughs> Pity about this evening. Oh, well, play rained off, as they say. I didn't expect to see you in so early. I thought Tuesday was wireless night. <laughs> so did we. It just got a bit wet up at the hut. It's more like a flood. It's all underwater again, my dear Elizabeth. Oh, dear. I suppose that's it for tonight. Then. No, the show will go on. Yes, quite right. We've never missed one, yes, and I don't intend to now just because of a little rain. Well, so you'll need a time. boat to get in tomorrow. Either that or we can all swim into work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, at least the ducks will be happy. Now, who's drinking Ooh, wine? No, 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 it's not my round. No, I know it's mine. I should think so as well, the way you dashed off on the motorbike. Someone had to risk it. Mine's a pint, Peter. Gentlemen, I have an announcement. You've just got to brighten the broadcast up. It's all getting rather stilted. Mm. So what can we do? I don't think my voice will take it any longer. Mm. Um, how about reading a book? Well, how about some Shakespeare? Oh, no, that would be too high, bro. But well, if we carry on the way we are, we'll be back to Bill Ditch and reading his dreaded train time. Oh, oh yeah. Lord, <laughs> save us from that. But as for Shakespeare, I think my delicate sensibilities might be seriously affected at the thought of you lot reading the words of the immortal buck. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could try something a little less ambitious. Well, just in case, I did get a copy of Serrano de Bergerac from the library. Whatever it is, it's got to be simple. But that's not a bad idea, Edward. We could just do the balcony scene. I don't think anyone would have to move. Just as well. The absolute hell trying to set up multiple microphones. Oh, I don't know. I could build some form of box to connect them together. Whatever we do, we have to be very careful not to upset Mr Burrows and the rest of the top brass. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Chaps, I don't think that will be a problem for very much longer. How so, Harry? Our worthy head of the company publicity department and the rest of the top brass were seen boarding the company train to London this morning. Word has it they're setting up a new wireless station well, in London. What I, what I hear, they're going to give it the call sign of 2LO. I suppose the LO stands for London. Hmm, clever chap, the Postmaster General, isn't he? Maybe they'll keep Burroughs in London. Oh, it's London far enough away, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I still don't know if broadcasting will actually take off. We can't do duets, the piano always sounds tinny, fiddles come out like concertinas, and deep tenors seem to muffle oh, badly. I think the fault lays in the microphone. I hear Round is working on a better one. Well, anything's better than the converted telephone handset. I'll take an even bet that if Round's microphone comes up to scratch, the London mob will get them first. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think one more round then, and we'll make a move. You know, I'm feeling rather relaxed this evening. I... I think I'll open the broadcast tonight. I have a feeling it's going to be a good night. Well, look on the bright side. The Jenny's sounding OK. Always providing the rain keeps off. Maybe the bath did it some good. I just hope the transmitter stands up to the strain. Well, now that Noel's not pounding the key, it should be OK. Well, gentlemen, are we all ready? Yes, Peter, about a minute to go. Is the transmitter OK, Harry? Uh, looking OK at my end. Hey, Harry, are you really glad not to be doing the talking? No future in it, old son. I'll stick to designing them. Leave the talking to others. Come on, Harry, you use strong silent type. Uh -huh. <laughs> OK, g gentlemen, settle down now. It's almost time. Stand by, everybody. Ready, Peter? One, two, three. <coughs> um... Hello, CQ. Hello, CQ. This is two Emma Talk Riddle testing. This is two Emma Talk Riddle testing. Hello, Ash. Hello, Ash. Ash. Hello. Are the signals okay? W wave your hands if it's all okay. Oh, oh, it's not okay. Oh, dear. No waves. No wave at all. Curses. Kirk. Kirk, is it all right in there? Sorry, Eck, we're off air again, I think. No, oh, it's not all right. Um, sorry, CQ, we're closing down for a minute. Please hang on, wait for us, we will be back. Now what's up? Uh, sorry, chaps, all my fault. Just a little problem with the switches. Trying it again, Harry. OK, switching on again now. 
Hello, CQ. Hello, CQ. This is to Emma Talk. To Emma Talk. Hello, CQ. This is to Emma Talk. To Emma Talk. Riddle calling. Is, is it all right now, Ash? Kirk, is it all right? You're sure? You're blasting the mic. So, what, what, what did you say? I said you're over-modulating. Oh, oh, it's blasting. Hello, CQ, CQ, it's, it's blasting. Do you want to blast? I blast the whole lot of it. Well, look, um, well, how are you tonight? I'm afraid we've had one or two terrible things happen tonight. We did expect to get a serious singer for you. Well, she failed. Yes, well, singers do, you know. But we've got tonight a number of gramophone records, as usual. Uh, What's happening? Uh, hello, CQ. Hello, CQ. What, what did you say, Kirk? We're off air again. Hang on. Oh, it's not going out at all. Oh, oh, dear. Well, it's all your fault. Found it. The aerial connection's fallen out again. It's what? Well, for heaven's sake, connect it up. Oh, oh it is connected up. Well, this is all going out. Hello, CQ. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm sorry there's been a little bit of a misunderstanding, a little technical hitch. Yes, yes, you get them too. I know, aren't they awful? Well, I, I think we're ready to begin now, and the first thing I've got to introduce is a record entitled... Oh, dear, why are records always entitled? Why can't they just be called something? Oh, dear, there's too many records. Never mind. If only we could find one that sounded right. How's the transmitter holding up, Harry? Should be OK. Yeah, I sincerely hope so. Well, don't shout so much, Peter. I don't shout. I'm sorry. I don't shout. Well, whatever. Record's ending, and you're on. Uh, well, uh, hello, CQ. Uh, this is to Emma Tuck Riddle calling. Don't forget that now. To Emma Tuck. And, um, well, I mean, how are you tonight? Dreadful night this is, isn't it? Is it boring with you? It's pouring cats and dogs here. We have water in the transmitter, water in the microphone... Even water in the tea. It really is quite, quite terrible. Ah, at uh, last I have it. We have a little, um, we have a title, a record entitled Home Sweet Home, performed by Miss Noel Eady. I think we should have found some water music by, oh, uh, who's that chap his name? You mean Handel, don't you? Oh, yes, Handel, that's the chap. Well, any more water in here and we'll be swimming in it. Eck, the record's ending. Oh, yes. Um, no, no, I didn't like that very much, did you? No? No, well, never mind, never mind. Uh, yes, Kirk? Don't forget the close down. Oh, well, I'm told we have to close down for three minutes. Well, it's so wet and dreary that I think we should keep it going for a while. What do you think? Yes? Yes. Oh, my God, he's not, is he? Hello, CQ. Hello, CQ. This is two Emma Talk Riddle. This is two Emma Talk Riddle. It is, you know. Now we're for it. Well, tonight we have a most marvellous thing that's going to happen. Yes, we're going to receive Rome. Yes, yes, we're going to receive Rome. We're what? Yes, What's I know. He playing All at? the way from Search Rome. Me. Did he say Hello, CQ. Rome? I hope so, you're still Ash. hearing me. I think he's taking leave of his senses, this is you know. two Emma Talk Riddle. Well, CQ, we have that famous Italian tenor now. What's his name? Yeah, th that famous Italian tenor, Gridlico, is going to sing No Flutterama Fortissimo, which being translated means, um, it, well, it's very difficult. Now, how are we going to receive it? Yes, um, there may be some This is going to be interesting. Especially as Rome's not on the air yet. Yeah, Didn't there Marconi may be some give the Vatican a set? I don't think it's been <laughs> There may be some oscillation. Hang on, CQ. H hang on, hang on a minute. Yes, here Harry, it is. 
For God's sake. All What's the way from Rome? Drinking tonight. Yeah, that, that's a very you know, Eck, when he's way. having fun. Between you and me, yeah. old man, I think it's rather good. Roma, Roma, Roma. Even he can't help us now. Bellissimo, Michelangelo, Leonardo. Roma, Roma, Roma. Spaghetti fortissimo, la, 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 no. No, no, I'm afraid we're losing it, yes. Losing the link to Rome, yes, yes. I, I also hear the Italian tenor's also a little tired. Had to blast very hard to reach all this way, you know. Perhaps you ought to rest him, mm? Yes, I think so. Uh, but don't panic, it's time for some more music. This record is a... It, it's a... Well, it's a, it's a big black ground one. <laughs> For God's sake, Peter, have you gone mad? Oh, come on, Noel, let's entertain our Radio Ham friends. You know they like it. I hope this bloody rain stops soon. Always rains on Tuesdays, you know. You've noticed. Hang on, chaps. Peter, the record's ending. Uh, yeah. Hello, CQ. Hello, CQ. Well, uh, uh, we, we have a very long, important announcement to make. Well, it's more of an observation. We, um... Uh, the engineers at 2 Emma Talk have noticed that on Tuesday evenings it's always raining. Did you realise this fact? I feel there's probably a very important scientific principle in there. Uh, and something else. Uh, we have heard that a perpetual deep depression has descended over Iceland. It's worrying, isn't it? Well, uh, what's next? I believe it's going to be a piano solo from our local guest performer. Uh, no, 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 I was wrong. Uh, hang on to your headphones. I will now hand you over to our uh, special reporter to bring these um, poems from 2MT. Peter, it's time to close down now. We're already over time. No, 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 not now, man. Yes, now. No, uh, <coughs> sorry about that, CQ. Come on, Kirk, read us some poems. <clears throat> oh, yes. Uh, good evening, listeners. Some poems, then. Are you ready? Hey, diddle, dod road. Two grids in one quad road. The outer one forming the plate. The electrons got muddled with so many grids, but the final M value was eight. Ah, uh, you know, that was rather fun. I have another. Well, Kirk, don't keep it a secret. Let's have it. Four and twenty B valves standing on a shelf. Ash couldn't find one, so I had to go myself. When the circuit opened, the phones began to sing. Don't you think I was right to smash the beastly thing? <laughs> Thank you, Kirk, so much, yes. The... These were specially composed for our more technical listeners, so remember, listeners, on Tuesday evening, it's always raining. How long is he going on for? There's going to be trouble over this. You mark my words. Can't stop him now. He's got the bit between his teeth. Well, if they close us down, it was fun while it lasted. You know, listeners, I accidentally tuned in the other evening to our friends in London. Yes, you're right, a bit of an accident, really. Um, you know the call sign, something like 2BO or... Uh, no, no, sorry, it's 2LO. Uh, broadcasting to the nation or some such. Oh, no, don't upset them, Peter. No, it's all stuff and nonsense. No music, no fun. Oh, come on, chaps, cheer up or shut up. You've done it well, I do wish they'd lighten up. They all sound so very miserable. I think our deep depression over Iceland is firmly settled over the Strand. He's right, you know. I listened in. It was very yeah, boring. I, well, they are boring. It's all dinner jackets and toffee-nosed voices. A very gramophone true, old man. record the other day, but they thought it was technically too difficult to achieve. Dear, oh dear. This simply won't do. Perhaps we should shut up shop here at dear old Rittle and slip down and give them a hand. You know, perhaps Mr. Gridlico could perform a concert for them. No? No, no. No, I don't think so. He's probably a little bit too highbrow. We wouldn't want to stretch their talents or techniques. So, a message from all of us at 2MT to all at 2BO. Oh, sorry, sorry, 2LO. Please, Please cheer, cheer up. up. And to emphasise this point, we've borrowed the famous 2LO close-down chimes from our illustrious London colleagues. Are we ready to serenade? Three, two, one... Go. Good. Good. 
that's good. That's coming along splendidly. Oh dear, perhaps not. No, listeners. Eck, Eck, it's well over close down time. Yes, yes. Um, now, listeners, I would like to thank you all for your very kind letters. They're most pleasing to all of us hard-working engineering types. We're always fascinated with your range and reception reports. Come on, Harry, pull the plug or something. Sorry, let's give two L.O. a run for their money. We really should offer a prize for the longest distance, but you know how it is. Times are very, very hard, but... Well, please write in. Tell us who and what and where. Yes, 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 all right. Oh, dear, I fear Kirk is nodding his head. We must go. <laughs> Parting is such sweet sorrow. But when you have to go, you have to go, so... Good night, CQ. Yes, the usual song. I know. Dearest, the concert's ended. Sad wills the heterodyne. You must soon switch off your valves. I must soon switch off mine. Write back and say you heard me. Your distance and where and how. Hark, the engine's failing. Goodbye, you old lowbrow. It's not very good, really. Uh, let me think. Um, CQ, the concert's ending. Loud squeals the heterodyne. You must soon switch off your set. I must soon switch off mine. Stay for one fleeting moment. Tuned to the last degree. CQ, the concert's ending. Ending for 2MT. How can we keep it going? Fouls blue and engine hot. CQ, the concert's ended. Wish we could scrap the lot. I wish we could scrap the lot. So, good night, CQ. God bless you, because I can't. Good night, everybody. Well, it's told the pace. Only just, old man. We'll have to check it out tomorrow. Rain's a bit lighter now, thank goodness. Well, have to do so. we'll have to do something about that feeder cable before next week. I'll get some more hose pipe. Might be an idea to check the aerial. May be a problem with it. If the rain's got into the bamboo, it will start to bend and we'll need another mast. Come on, chaps. Back to the pub? Now, Peter, that's probably the most sensible thing that you've said all evening. You know, that was some night last night, Rolls. Yes, but I wonder if we didn't go just a little bit too far. Too far? Just enough to take us off the air, I would have said. Well, only a few listeners heard it after all. Oh, we all heard it in the pub. You did? Mm, and we all liked Mr Eckersley's soul. What about my poem? Uh, most of the regulars didn't really understand it, you know. I'm not surprised. Well, it was for the radio hams, you know. They like them. Mind you, nobody else did. <laughs> the poet is never understood. I continue in life a tortured soul. In your case, Harry, that's just as well. Well, granted, the ha radio hams like 2MT. It's the others I worry about at times. You mean we have listeners as well? Oh, come in, Noel. Just in time to join the post-mortem. Apt word for it in my view, Rolls. I don't think there'll be much work in the old hut today. We've been reflecting on last night's, um... The word you're looking for, Rolls, is performance. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't do any of the close-down periods, you know. And that's just one of the things that's going to get us into hot water. Do you think they'll close us down? Have to find us first. Arthur Burroughs will have a fit. We've already run up a dozen black marks. But he only runs the company's publicity department. He's not an engineer, is he? What's that got to do with it? I think head office are only looking for an excuse to move us closer to the fold. Oh, God, not a move to New Street. Or even move us out altogether. What, close us down altogether? I say, what's all this? Why the gloom? Why the despair? Anyone would think it was some sort of wake. After last night, Peter, it could well be the case of holding a wake. Oh, come on, chaps. I think you're all worrying unnecessarily. Uh, hello. This is Marconi's Airborne Wireless Research Division, Rittle. Yes, Mr. Eckersley, just one moment, sir. It's for you, sir. Yes? Uh, yes? Well, did I really say that? Really? Oh, well, yes, of course. Look at you all. Who is it? Mr. Burroughs. Here we go, chaps. Start packing. I knew it. The axe is about to fall. Shh. 
Well, yes. Quite. Um, well, I, I think perhaps the Italian tenor was a bit too much. It, uh, it probably distorted terribly. Yes? Y yes, certainly. Thank you very much. Sounds like bad news, Peter. Come on, Eck. What did Burroughs have to say? Are we looking for new jobs, then? Well, gentlemen, you were right. Head office, or rather Mr. Arthur Burroughs, is extremely irritated. Told you so. Apparently they've received rather a lot of letters about the broadcast, and a small crowd has formed outside the main gates. Hope it's not a lynching party. Well, I think it's all rather funny. You would. And here comes the mail. <sighs> Here are, boys. Usual bump, then. And the rest. Sorry? Well, you've got a lot of letters today. <laughs> All about it in the village. You lot are famous. What do you mean, famous? They yeah, say so you had some fun last night. <laughs> That's one way of describing it, I suppose. Well, you gentlemen are famous now. Anyway, here it is. Where do you want it? Only, uh, I can't leave the bag. Go around the table, we'll do. All right. Heck. You'd better look at these. Bloody hell, there's a fair number of letters here. It is quite a stack, isn't it? There, there, transmitter. Never mind, old girl. It's not your fault. Well, we'd better make a start. Anyone got the letter knife? Let's sort it out in a company mail and your personal letter. Oh, look. Another little memo from a very nice Mr. Burroughs. Here you are, Peter. What's the problem now? Um, uh, oh, oh, you remember that Cliftophone gramophone we had on loan for a while? The one that never worked properly. Well, I thought we sent it back. Well, actually, I think Kurt broke it. I did not. Well, we've had a complaint from Arthur. He says it got badly scratched in transit and he wants the box back. So, uh, where's the box? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, come on, it must be here somewhere. Well, Edward here used some of it to repair the bench. Only a little bit. And some more of it was used on the broken window, and we used a bit on the door. And the rest, well, it just sort of, uh, went in the stove. Oh, this really is not good enough. Well, you ordered it. Did I? Yes. yes. Oh. Uh, anyway, he also says we should have told the listeners about the contraption when we were using it. Now, where's the waste paper basket? I'll file this one. Oh, well, we're in trouble again. Never mind. I hear on the grapevine that he's off to London shortly to look after the moral content of our neighbours down at 2 hello. God help them. Well, we'll keep him out of our hair. I wonder if he's learned any lessons at good old 2 Emma Talk. I very much doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> well, here goes with the first letter from our listeners in the big bad world. What's it say, then? Uh, it's from Edenbridge in Kent. Uh, dear sirs, I wish to send my appreciation for super <laughs> they liked it here's another one and another you'll like this one peter it's from a mrs smith she believes that she's in love with the man behind the microphone <laughs> <laughs> I say, how far away is Edenbridge? They say it sounded we were like, just like next door. Uh, about 40 miles as the crow flies. That's not bad for a lash-up. Yeah, well, must be strangers. I didn't think anyone knocked on doors around here. It's two young lads, chaps. Hello, is Mr. Emma Talk here? <laughs> uh, bring them in, Rose. Now, boys, what can we do for you this fine day? Is Mr. Emma Talk here? Yes, mister. To Emma Talk, lock on the wireless. <laughs> well, good morning. Uh, Captain PP of 2MT at your service. How can I help you? We heard you last night in my dad's shed. Did you now? You were on my headphones in my grand's pudding basin. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard you singing and whistling and banging on a drum on the wireless. What's wireless? Dunno, really. Sort of magic stuff through the air. <laughs> you can hear it on a crystal box. Well, that's one way of looking at it. Then my mum got cross about the aerial tied to her washing line. <laughs> and then she kept shouting at me that it was my bedtime. <laughs> we do it again, mister. Please, it was really good fun. Well, yes, we hope to. My dad says you'll be in all the papers. Everyone's talking about it. Does that make you famous? Uh, can I have your autograph, please, Mr. Emmertock? Hey, Kirk, do you feel famous? Oh, well, that's a hard one. No, I can honestly say I haven't felt famous all morning. Oh, well, fame is such a transitory thing. Well, never mind that for a moment. I uh, signed the book for the boys, and, boys, thank you for coming to see us in our little hut. We'll tell you, Dad, that next week Miss Nora Scott is coming to perform, so we have to do a little bit of planning. Thank you, Mr. Emma Talk. See them out, if you will, Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> Despite the forebodings of Marconi's publicity department, the fame of Rittle and 2MT continued to grow. Its value to the nation's band of dedicated radio amateurs and their professional cousins was enormous. But Rittle's success was not the last. 
For in London, the Marconi Company had established a more powerful transmitter using the call sign of 2LO to broadcast the programs of the fledgling British Broadcasting Company. Within months, the company was flooded with orders for a chain of repeater transmitters to cover the nation. And for Eckersley's team and 2MT, the writing was on the wall. I was just working it out the other day, chaps. And do you know that it's been almost a year since we started? Well, the question is, what can we do next? Do something special for 2MT's first birthday. Well, if we're going to carry on, we are going to have to replace our transmitter. Well, you know the BBC stations are all running one and a half kilowatts each. The problem, as I see it, is that with their relay stations, the BBC is now on nearly every night. Now, let's face it, nearly half the country can hear the jolly old British Broadcasting Company. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr Burroughs got his station anyway. They're welcome to him. Yes, who would have thought it? Programme director of 2LO London. Pity he insists on running it his way. It is dreadfully dry, you know. What do you expect, Peter, when all the announcers have to wear dinner jackets with red carnations every night? Didn't stop them copying our ideas, though, did it? I mean, Peter's children's stories, our play and the news broadcast? Yes, it's a case of we do it first, they copy it. Well... This seems the right moment, as I do have something to tell you. I have to report that I've been down to London to see John Reith. So that's where you went last Thursday. You old traitor. You, visiting the hated enemy? And after all you've said about him as well. Yes, well, he wants us to go and work for him. What? You're joking. Us? Work in London. They desperately need some new direction in the new BBC engineering department. And John Reith thinks we can give it to them, does he? He could be right. Well, I've agreed to do one more broadcast on the 17th of January and then close 2MT down forever. Oh. So, that's it, gentlemen. I'm afraid there's no easy way to say it, but I think we all realise that Riddle's had its day. The company has put out an official communique closing us down. Apparently, we all did very well, but now we can rest on our laurels. Anyone got any laurels? <laughs> <laughs> Still, it seems a shame just to close 2MT down without a word. We did so many different things and made some real progress. It's almost a waste. No, Harry, I think you're wrong. Without 2MT and Riddle, the BBC would not have happened. British broadcasting would not have happened. So, I, I don't mean forever. Someone somewhere would have woken up to the possibilities eventually, but... Remember that it was this long, low heart filled with long, low people. Yes, yes, old joke, I know. But we did the job. We showed them all that could be done and how to do it. And what's more important, we did it fast and we did it damn well. Within weeks, the team had moved their base of operations to London and the recently formed British Broadcasting Company. As company became corporation, Peter Eckersley was to become the BBC's first chief engineer. By the time he left, some five years later, his enthusiasm and technical expertise had helped build the BBC into the foremost broadcasting service in the world, his engineering department having grown to some 300 engineers and technicians. As for the other engineers, who pioneered those early transmissions from Rittle, Noel Ashbridge followed Peter Eckersley as BBC chief engineer before being knighted in 1935 and becoming the BBC's first technical director until his retirement in 1953, when he came home to Essex to become a director of the Marconi Company. In 1952, Rolls-Wynne was promoted to follow Eckersley and Ashbridge as the third member of the 2MT team to become a BBC chief engineer. And whilst Harry Kirk became head of the BBC research department, his friend Basil McClarty went on to become head of their design and installation department. As for Edward Trump, the lone member of the team who elected to stay with the Marconi Company, he continued to work on development in airborne wireless, work that was to have a vital wartime role in RAF airborne communications. These then were the six men who, from those small beginnings in that old ex-army hut in an Essex field, pioneered British broadcasting. You have been listening to 2 Emma Talk Riddle. This dramatic reconstruction, taken from official Marconi Company archives and recollections, was written by Tim Wander, with additional scripting by Dennis Rockard. In the part of Peter Eckersley, you heard John Glasscock. Noel Ashbridge was played by Steve Hales, Harry Kirk by Tony Hine, 
Rolls T. B. Wynn by Keith Flack, Basil McClarty by Andy Morton, Edward Trump by Mike Hogg, and Elizabeth Beeson by Angela Neville. Other parts were played by Ben Williams and Edmund Hine. Your narrator was David Schacht, with production, direction, and audio realization by Dennis Rockard for Hosipog Productions. Music